Welcome. Let me preface this video by saying that as of today, I've had this thing for exactly one week. So you've been forewarned. Um, sounds a lot like the intro I did for the Hall Crystal Flute video. Um, my purpose in making these videos is kind of twofold. Um, first of all, it's interesting for me to look back and go, you know, what did I sound like a week out, you know, and have I improved at all? And then secondly, if you're perhaps, you know, considering purchasing, you know, a flute like this and haven't played it before, what might you be able to expect? Um, this is a Shao. Um, this particular flute is made by Jeffrey Ellis um, in the Redwoods of California. Um, boy, he's a really fine flute maker. I really kind of watched the guy for a while um, on his website and kind of going back and forth, gosh, you know, do I, do I really need another flute realistically? But there was a lot of things about this particular instrument that really kind of grabbed my eye, namely the number of scales these things can play. Um, they are toted as being the most versatile open hole flute, and I would say that that's probably pretty accurate. Um, there's a lot of things these things can play. As an example, um, the Shao can play four major diatonic scales, um, four minor diatonic scales, that's scales starting on different notes. Um, it'll play six minor pentatonic scales, which is the Native American flute scale. It'll play six major pentatonic scales, uh, which would be the Pueblo Anasazi flute scale. Um, it'll play two different harmonic major scales, two different harmonic minor scales, as well as Chinese scales, Japanese scales, the Ethiopian scales, gypsy scales, half of them I don't even know what they are because I'm not a musician. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, this particular flute is made out of uh, granadillo wood. Um, a lot of shells are made out of bamboo. Um, uh, Jeffrey Ellis makes all his um, out of different types of hardwoods and things like that. Um, I really like the look of this one and as I say I for several weeks I kept looking at it on his website. Um, he is very much a custom flute maker, does a lot of special orders. He will occasionally make flutes that he just keeps in stock and sells on his website. So the picture that you see is actually the flute that you'll get and uh, boy I, I really like the look of it and when I received it it was so much more than I even thought it would be just looking at the pictures on the website. Um, I am completely pleased with this thing. Um, this particular flute is in this, the uh, key of D, um, meaning the lowest root note is D. Um, in Chinese music, this would be considered a tonic G flute because G would be kind of the mid-range tone, so you can play up the octave and down. Um, I found it fairly easy to play this flute. Um, I started out uh, not even a year ago on the Native American flute, um, playing that, really liked it. Um, then kind of branched out to the Hall Crystal flute about four or five months ago. Um, the difference between uh, flutes like the Native American flute, um, the tin whistle, the ocarina, the recorder, all those type of flutes are fipple flutes. Um, meaning that they have a, a directed airway that directs your breath over uh, the splitting edge that actually makes the sound. So basically the flute makes the sound for you. When you get into embouchure style flutes, um, whether it be the Hall Crystal Flute, the regular Silver Concert Transverse Flute, um, things like the Pueblo Anasazi Flute, which is rim blown, um, or the Shao, which is inblown, um, those all require you to direct your airstream in order to make the sound. Um, so they're definitely trickier flutes to play. Um, not very good at it yet, but um, really encouraged. So I guess why I'm saying that is if you were thinking about purchasing one of these, if you have some experience with embouchure style flutes, you will find it no problem at all to play this. Um, I had a decent tone straight out of the box with it the day I received it about a week ago. Um, if you are not familiar with embouchure style flutes, it may take you a little bit more time to get the airstream down. I know the first embouchure style flute I had, like I say, was about four or five months ago, um, that Hall Crystal flute. And it 
you know, it took me a good day to really be able to get a, a tone out of it. Um, and then you have flutes like the Pueblo Anasazi flute, which I do have one of those. A lot of modern Pueblo Anasazi flutes actually have a notch kind of cut in them, which does make them a little easier to play. Um, I bought mine, my Anasazi flute from Butch Hall. Um, he makes them as close as you can get to the artifacts that were found up in northern Arizona. Um, it's strictly a rim-blown flute. There's no cutout or anything. And those Anasazi flutes, they're everything you've heard that they are. Um, they are an elusive little beast. There are days I can pick that thing up, I can make a sound and play a melody, and then I'll have several days in a row where I'll pick it up and nothing but air. No matter what I do, can't make a sound out of it. And actually, that's kind of what I love about it. It's kind of interesting. You, it's a flute you can pick up and go, is it going to make a noise or is it not going to make a noise for me today? Um, not so with the Shao. Um, the Shao, this thing is has given me music every time I've picked it up and played it, so really encouraged about that. Um, I, I would I would really recommend a Jeffrey Ellis flute. Um, they're more stable than the bamboo. Bamboo does crack through time, especially if too much moisture gets in them. Um, he builds his flutes. He is is very particular in the way he builds. He is very much a craftsman. And he builds these flutes to last you a lifetime. And boy, just looking at the way he coats the inside of the bore and everything, boy, this wood is protected from the moisture. And I do expect this flute to absolutely outlive me, no doubt about it. Um, so yeah, I would, I would highly recommend the Jeffrey Ellis flutes, a fan, fantastic flute builder. So anyway, without much further ado, that's, that's, that's my take on this flute so far, having it a week out. And uh, I'll go ahead and try a tune on it now, just a little song that I made up, just so you kind of get an idea of, you know, what one of these might sound like after have one, having one for about a week. So anyway, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. 